Hey everyone, wanted to make a quick video. Today we're gonna to be walking through the process of setting up your Logitech Flow devices using Logitech's new Options Plus software. Stick around. So just a few requirements before we get started. Uh, four specifically, first off, you're gonna to want to download and install the Logitech Options Plus software on each machine that you're gonna to wanna to be setting up Flow on. This is a beta software. New features, bug fixes, things like that are gonna happen. Uh, but so far, it works on either Mac OS uh, 10.15 or higher and Windows uh, 10 or higher. So that brings us to our next point is you will need to have either one of those operating systems at this time. No other operating systems are currently supported, nor is there any information that I can find that's going to support anything like Linux or any Android or uh, iOS, nothing like that so far. Now, the next thing is you're gonna to want to uh, connect each peripheral to each machine individually first. So if you have the mouse and the keyboard, like I'll be demonstrating in today's video, you're gonna to wanna to connect those to your Mac, those to your Windows or whatever machines you have first, and then you're gonna to wanna to proceed. Now, the last thing and probably the most important is you're gonna to want to make sure that you are on the same network. Typically, your home office or a home network is gonna be on the same network. You can have a machine that's wired and a machine that's wireless as long as they're on the same network. That being said, let's go ahead and jump into the software and show you how to set it up. Okay, so to get started, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the software is running on each one of those machines. And then on your primary machine, go ahead and open up the Logitech Options software. Now, if you've got multiple devices like I do here, you're gonna to want to click on the mouse because the mouse is the master when it comes to enabling or disabling the flower or uh, using flow. So if you see, if we click on the mouse, we have a flow option. If you click on the keyboard, if you forgot the keyboard, there's no flow option because the mouse is the primary device that you'll attach the keyboard to uh, when you're wanting to set up the, the devices. And that'll make sense here in just a moment. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna click on the mouse. We're going to click on flow and you can see where it says, welcome to Logitech Flow. All you're gonna do is go ahead and click on set up flow. It's gonna say connect other computers, follow the above three steps. All you're gonna do is simply hit continue. From this point forward, it should automatically scan the network. It should find any other machines that are currently running the Options Plus software. And if it's successful, it'll say successfully connected. Flow is now enabled and ready to use on your computers. Go ahead and hit continue. From here, you can actually move these around. So you're gonna to want to orient it the way that your desktop is set up. So in this case, I've got my MacBook on the left side of the screen. So I'm going to move the MacBook over to the left. Uh, if the Mac does go to sleep or anything like that, this will not wake it up. You will need to wake up the Mac uh, manually or your other machine manually in order for it to reconnect, but it should automatically reconnect from that point forward. If you need to disable or remove a computer, you can click on this little three dots. You've got the disable option and you've got the remove option here as well. If you want to keep them connected, but maybe you want to turn off flow, maybe you're not using your other machine at this time, right here at the top, you can click on flow. There's a little toggle switch right here and you can see that it has disabled flow. And when we go to the edge of the screen, it no longer moves to that other machine. Simply toggle that switch back on Things will reconnect as long as, again, it's running on the network. Those are just the basic settings in here. If you go up to the more settings in the top right-hand corner, you can see that we've got move cursor to the edge. So once we moved it to the edge, it would move on to the next computer. Or you can do hold control and move cursor to the edge. So maybe you're doing a lot of movement on the screen and maybe you're moving to the other machine when you're hitting that edge. If you don't like that, you can make it to where you need to hold control in order to move to the other machine. You can enable or disable the copy paste option. And then of course, if you have the keyboard like I do, you can toggle the switch that says link keyboard. And once you do that, this will uh, open it. This will uh, no longer be gray, it'll be highlighted. And you can select your keyboard if it doesn't automatically from that list. And then once you move over with your mouse, it should automatically move the keyboard over. Going back to the previous screen here, if you need to add a computer, so you can see that I've got the two here, Maybe I've added a third into this. You can come on down and tap on add computer and it will start searching for a third computer on the network. And you can expand up to three devices uh, using the Logitech Flow. So now that we've got everything set up the way that we want in the software, I'm gonna show you guys how this actually works. Okay, so this probably isn't the best angle, but it works in order for you to see both screens and show you guys how this actually functions. 
uh, on a kind of a live demonstration. So you can see that I'm currently controlling the Windows machine right now and I want to move over to the actual Mac. Now, I want to also transfer over some files and now because this is a local based, uh, a local network based system and it is using software, I try to keep the file transfers very small just because there's a chance of the software maybe cutting out or maybe you lose connection or something along those lines. If you're transferring a large file, you may end up uh, losing the progress on it. So as of right now, I would just keep it very lightweight, very easy to do. Um, I've got some STL files here for a 3D printer that I actually want to move over to the Mac and then I've got some photos that I actually want to move from the Mac over to the Windows machine. Uh, I want to just copy these over so uh, they've made it really easy just to do copy paste because we have the copy paste option enabled within the settings so I'm just going to highlight the files that I want, right click and copy. You can, can do uh, control C and then a command V on the Mac or you can right click copy, right click paste, however you want to do it. All of those methods work. So we're gonna, we right clicked, we copied those. We're gonna move to the edge. We are now on the Mac and we're gonna right click and paste those six items. And you can see right now they're all pending. And then once they have finished pending, uh, the pending will be removed from the name. It didn't take very long for that to do that. That was just a couple of seconds. Um, and now that we've done that, I want to move some of these photos from the Mac over to the window. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna drag and drop or drag over these and I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy these as well. And I don't believe we have the option to do any, uh, we can't do any drag and drop. So you will need to do a control C or command C, uh, control V, the various combinations of that. So we're gonna, again, highlight these. We're going to copy them, move to the edge. We are now controlling the Windows machine once again. We're gonna right click and we're going to paste. Now on the machine here, on the Windows machine, we do get a progression bar as far as how far that it's transferred. On the Mac, we don't have that option. I don't know if that's because they have implemented that into the Mac's software or the version of that software yet, but on Windows, we have an actual copying time frame. So uh, this actually went very quickly. This uh, video file here, it's not very long, but it is about 140 megabytes. And then each one of these photos is about 20 megabytes. So just a few seconds and everything transferred over very easy. And it's a great software, especially if you're using a dual operating system like I do, in order to move your files back and forth. So there you have it, just a few final thoughts. Uh, so far, the software has been working great. Like I said earlier, it definitely is in beta. Now, with these type of videos, we tend to want to have a blog that goes along with it, so I will definitely link the blog that goes along with this video down in the video description as well. That is going to wrap it up for this week's video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you liked it. You got something out of it. Hopefully you're able to get it working. If not, if you're still having some issues, feel free to reach out down in the comments and I'll answer those as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Those three things certainly help us grow our channel. We appreciate what you guys do and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.